or you doing both? I'm doing QMI. You're doing QMI. So then you yes. will be here for the rest of the session for today. Um, okay, so welcome to your fifth session of basic numeracy skills. Um, yeah, so today's session, we're going to deal with uh, compound interest. And we're also going to include with compounding interest or compound interest, we're going to also include how we calculate or ask uh, answer questions related to time value of your money. So today is the ninth. We're doing compound interest and we look at the how to calculate compound interest for future value and present value. Next week, Monday, and I'm I'm so surprised that still on the WhatsApp group, people are still asking, do we have a class today? This classes happens every day, except if it's a public holiday and we I have a consent from you to say we can continue. But the classes happens every Monday. Um, then the next week, we're going to look at how we calculate payments or annuities. And then the last one we go, uh, on the 23rd, we're going to look at amortization and then we go back to the basics, how to manipulate an equation. Um, I might change this from how to manipulate the equations depending on how, how many people attend from uh, on what. If there are more BNU students, then we will stick to this. But if there are more QMI students, like today it's only the two of you, if next week is still the two of you, then we will stick with um, type some type of a QMI type of difficult questions. Like for example, instead of doing only manipulating of a, um, an equation, we might focus on uh, quadratic equations, simultaneous equations, things like that. Okay. Because some of these things we covered them in the um, in in the first session that we had. Do you have any question, comments, query before we start? I'm going to post also the link to the register. Please make sure that you complete the register. Uh, if I can find that, complete the register before we start. Do you have any question or comments? If there are no questions, then let's go on and look at how do we answer questions relating to compound interest. By the end of the session today, uh, you need to learn how to do basic calculations looking at compound interest and also at time value of your money. A compound interest is interest paid on interest. So the last time we met, we discussed simple interest, which is interest paid at the beginning. This one is interest paid on top of interest. When you when you um, borrow money at the bank and the bank tells you that your amount will be charged interest compounded monthly, it means every month you're going to be paying interest. So because you borrowed money, interest every month will be added but it means every month you will be paying interest on top of that interest because the interest will be added every month to the amount that you you are owing if you are saving that will be a good thing because the amount that you are saving every month will accumulate interest that gets paid into the same interest that you already um, already have paid or you have already accumulated. So when we calculate compound interest, we use the formula S is equals to P times one plus RT, R to the power of T. You need to have your financial calculator. It's very easy to use your financial calculator than to use the formulas. But if you don't have a financial calculator, you can still use these formulas, where S will represent your accumulated amount P represent your present value or your principal amount, and R will represent your interest, your interest rate, which is compounded, 
uh, and your T will represent the period, which is also compounded. So what do I mean by that? On this formula, when you see or you look at it, there are certain things that you need to be aware of. Your interest needs to be compounded, so it means it will have to be divided by the compounding period and your term of how long you are saving or how long the loan will be needs to also be compounded. So you need to multiply by the compounding period. And that is how the equation will look. Otherwise, then do the calculation outside and come back and substitute them into the formula. Okay. What are compounding periods? And they can differ depending on what the question is asking you. So you need to always be mindful of the compounding period. When the period or they state that it is compounded daily, you need to know that a day, there are 365 days in a calendar. So daily or day, it's 365. We do not take into consideration the leap year. If it's compounded weekly, there are 52 weeks of the calendar. So therefore, it means there will be 52, week, uh, 52 compounding periods. Monthly, it's 12. Quarterly, or what we call three months, if the question says it is compounded three months or the payment is made three months or month or, or quarterly. So therefore, you know that it is equivalent to four because a year can be divided into four quarters. Six months or biannually or half yearly, they mean two because a year can be divided into two. Sometimes they might say, they might give you any none of this. Also, let's let's complete this table and yearly or annually it will mean one year, which is equivalent to one. So sometimes the compounding periods they can say it is compounded uh, four months using the compounding periods or four months, not monthly months. This should be an A and S. If the period, they say it's four months, how many months will make up a year? There will be three. So therefore, it means your compounding period will be equivalent to three. Because if I take my calendar of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and if I split this calendar, full calendar year, um, into four parts, therefore it means grouping all my months into four months, then there will be three of them. So that is what we call by compounding. If it's daily, then it means I'm going to count how many days. So remember this a week. This is uh, a month. A month has days. Days, there are 30 or 31 depending on the month. Um, and if it's a week, a month has four weeks within a month, uh, sorry, within a week, and that will multiply by 12, that will be 52 as well, and things like that. So you just need to know how to break down a calendar month into compounding periods as well, depending on how they give you the information. Okay, that is compounding periods. So like I said, in terms of the formula, we say we use P times one plus R divided by the compounding periods to the power T times the compounding period. How do we do that? So in terms of the compounding periods, we just divide the, your, your interest. If they told us that the interest was 12%, which is 0 0.12, remember 12% divided by 100 will be 0 0.2, 0 0.12. And if they say monthly, you're going to divide 0, 0,12 with 12 months in the period. If they said it's two years, we take two years. T is our T 
and we're going to multiply it by the compounding periods and our compounding periods monthly is 12 and you can do with the rest of the other compounding periods like by annually the interest of 12 percent will be 0 0,12 divided by 2 which will be 0 0,06 which will be paid every quarter or every by by yearly into your account and the number of periods because it's by annually therefore how many uh yes if it's two years then if four it means it will be paid four times into your account and that's how we break down the compounding periods if we are given the interest and the number of years so let's look at an example now i <clears throat> I told you in the beginning, you need to have a financial calculator, a sharp EL3738 to do this, but you can still also use your formulas. So <clears throat> calculate the compounded amount of 500 invested for 10 years at 7.5% per annum compounded annually. Now, remember with everything we need to understand what the question is asking calculate the compounded amount so therefore it means we need to calculate the accumulated amount because it's a compounded amount so the that is our future value which will be our accumulated amount s on a 500 that is invested so that will be our present value that we are investing for 10 years that will be our period at 7.5 that will be our rate of zero comma remember seven seven and a half is the same oh sorry seven and a half is the same as 7.5 because a half is the same a half it's equivalent to 0.5 so 0.5 plus 7 is seven and a half and since it's seven and a half and it's in percentage and then i can just divide this by a hundred therefore it will be 0 0.775 0 0.075 that is our rate and they also tell us that it is compounded annually therefore my compounding period will be equals to one That is what the question, what we are given in the question. So we need to first identify the formula. So we know what the formula is. The future value is equals to principal amount times one plus R times to the power of T. We are told what P is. P is 500 times one plus our rate of zero comma 0.75 but remember we need to divide by the compounding period and our t is 10 times our compounding periods and we just substitute the values and calculate first we calculate what is inside the brackets first remember about mass rule what is inside the bracket 0, 0.075 divided by 1 is the same as 0, 0.075 plus one it will be one comma zero seven five ten times one is ten so we have five hundred times one comma zero seven five to the power of ten and simplifying the power first one one comma zero seven five to the power of ten gives us two comma zero six one zero three multiply by five hundred and the answer we get is 1030.52 that's how easy it is to use a formula but if you have a financial calculator it is even way better we're going to do the same so on your financial calculator which should look like this we're going to use the second function we're going to use an on and off we're going to use the mode those are the most important buttons that we're going to be using Hi, as well. yes can you just give me a minute to go to the other room to get my calculator okay
Okay, got it. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So we're going to use all those three buttons there at the top. We also going to be using this button here. That button there. Oh, actually, I must not even. Okay, we can do that. We're going to use those two. And we're going to use that plus that button. So those are for today. Those are very important. Plus also the, the numbers. I'm not going to highlight the numbers, but in terms of the functions that we're going to be using today, those are the most important functions. So how do you then are going to work with this? It's going to be very easy and very quick for you to use your calculator, but I want you to get to a habit of not jumping straight onto your calculator and calculating. You will see how I do mine, and then I expect you for every question that you're going to be answering. Please, like those who are calculating manually without a financial calculator, they will write step by step when they are answering the question. I expect you to also write step by step on a piece of a paper or a book that you have, the steps that you're going to follow, and then use your calculator to follow exactly the steps that you wrote down. And the steps stays the same all the time. And the more you practice, the more you write them, the more you will notice that you don't even need to remember the steps because they will come to you just like that. But for practice purpose, I want you to do as I do, write the steps down before you start calculating. So I know I've got my calculator, it's here next to me. And I need to answer the same question as if I had a manual calculator or a scientific calculator. Calculate the compounded amount of 500 invested for 10 years at 7.5% per annum compounded annually. Now, do you now need to write this in terms in relation to your calculator. Remember with the formula, we use the S, the P and all that. So that will be your second function. That is the mode that we're going to use to clear our calculator. That is the on and off button when I talk about on and off. This is the period. When I say second function N, N again, you're going to press that N. And you will notice that I always, I'm always i always going to say N and N again. It means you need to press the N button twice because when you press second function, we're calling the value that is written in orange there. But I don't have to repeat that value again and again and again and again. I can just repeat the button that you're going to be pressing. And I and Y, which will be your interest. And at the top of I and Y, there is a value that is written in orange. That is the first thing that we do on a calculator is to put in the compounding period. So I and Y will go into press it so many times as well. But when I say second function, I, I and Y, that is the first step that you do on your calculator all the time before you press the on and off button. Then we also have the present value and the future value. Oh, I forgot about the main the main button, the COMP, which is compute. The COMP button is to compute whether we want to compute the future value or what not, whether we want to compute the present value or whether we want to compute the interest or whether we want to compute the uh, <clears throat> whether we want to compute the period. <clears throat> OK. OK. And then the ENT, we're going to use it with the compounding periods as well. OK, so now let's find out what we are given. Always identify what you are asked and what you need in terms of the question. So the question says we need to calculate the compounded amount, which is our future value. You will notice that I'm not writing S, I'm writing FV because on the calculator it's written FV. That is our future value. We are given the present value. 
Uh, just give me a sec. Yo, my people today, they are on strike. They are making noise. Okay, apologies for that. Okay, so that will be our present value, our period. Remember, it's N in this instance, so I'm going to write the N. Just identify the things that you are given, our period. And we are also given uh, the rate. Now, here is the other thing that you need to be aware of, especially those who are using a financial calculator. When it comes to the interest, you don't have to go and divide by 100. Only when you are using formulas, you need so you need to go and divide by 100. Here, our period, our interest, which is I and Y, that is our rate, interest rate, we're going to capture it on the calculator as we see it. And here we see it as 7.5. And that's how we're going to put it on the calculator. Now, we are ready. To calculate but before that we need to finish off compounded yearly so therefore it means our compounding period and now i'm going to write compounding period as p slash y that is our compounded period so that is equals to one now we are ready to go and write the steps so the first step we need to do is to clear our calculator from any stored values on the calculator. And you need to do this step every time you use your calculator. Otherwise, things are stored on your calculator and you are not aware of, and then you just continue, you will get the wrong answers. So the first step that we do is press second function, and then we press the mode button, which is the CA. Second function, and the mode button, which will be second function CA, because we're calling the value that is on top of the mode, which is written CA. The next step is to capture the compounding periods. So we need to know that the first step, clear the calculator. It clears the calculator. The second step, we need to enter the compounding periods by saying second function i and y remember we pressing the value on top of the i and y which is p slash y i and y and then we're going to press the compounding period we said it's annual which means it's one so we're going to press one and then we're going to press e and t and our compounding period is stored on our calculator and what is next is to press the red button, the on and off. And then we say on and off our calculator. And then we go and press plus or minus. Always use the plus or minus. So the plus or minus is that one. Plus or minus the present value, you press 500. And then you press PV, which is your present value. The next one, let's put in our interest of 7.5. You just go 7.5 and you press I and Y, which will store your interest. On your calculator, you don't have to worry about dividing by the interest. In the memory of the calculator, it knows how to work with the data that you are storing. The last step of entering the data, we need to enter the year, the period. So there are 10. And because I want to multiply it with the compounding period, the reason why, even if the compounding period is one, the reason why I'm doing this is to make sure that I remember the steps all the time. Because all the time you need to press multiply by the compounding period. You need to remember that. Otherwise, at the later stage, I will tell you that when does it not matter whether you, you need to do the multiplying by the compounding periods. But for this 
purpose, we're going to multiply by the compounding periods because we did put the compounding period as well. So we say 10, second function, n, we press the n button, which is the times py, you will see on top of the n button there is times py. And then you press n again so that you can store that value onto your calculator. And once you are done, then you can compute your future value, which then you will say comp fv. That will give you your future value. So I want to give you two minutes to see if you can do the calculation on the calculator and get the same answer. And let me know if you're not getting the same answer. So on the calculator, I'm also doing it on my side. So I expect you to follow me. Second function, CA, which is the mode. Second function, I and Y, which is P slash Y. And press button number one and press E and T. And press the red button, which is on and off. Press the plus or minus at the bottom of my calculator, which gives me a negative value. Press 500 and then press PV. Always when you capture the value of your present value or your future value, you need to put the plus or minus first. If in your question there is a plus, there is a present value and the future value together, one of them needs to have a negative value. Then plus or minus needs to be on one of them. So for now, plus or minus 500 PV, and then we're going to put in 7.5, 7.5. You don't even have to play your calculator. You just continue and then press I and Y, and it will store 7.5 on your calculator. And then we say 10, second function, button number, uh, button N, and then we press also N again, and then it will say answer, arrow N is equal to 10. Therefore, 10 is stored, and then I go comp, C-O-M-P, which is the gray or black button, and future value, and you will see that the answer that I get is the same as the answer that we got the previous time, which was 10, uh, 1030.52. So I hope everyone got the same answer. Now, just to close off before you start doing your activities and exercise as well, If you do not have a financial calculator, you need to know how to manipulate the equation. This is the original equation. You need to know if you need to make P the subject of the formula, this is the way the equation will look. If you need to make R the subject of the formula, then that is how you will, your equation will end up being uh, because you will divide S by P and you will need to get rid of that power of t, which means you will have to take the root of that, um, the root of s over p, and then you need to subtract one from the answer. If it is the period that you are looking for all the time, then you need to know how to make or bring t down by using the laws of logarithm. Um, on how to get t down by using the log. log. Okay, and that is how you will calculate your formulas manually. Otherwise, all the steps that we did here, everywhere where you see red, everywhere where you see red, I can block it out and tell you that that is the values that you're going to interchange all the time except the on and off. So those, if you know the steps, this will be the standard. This is the step that we're going to always follow. Second function CA, second function P slash Y, what is the compounding period? E and T, on and off, plus or minus, and this two can interchange the PV and the VF and the future value. So plus or minus, what is the value of the present value or the value of the future value? I and Y, what is the value of I and Y? The period, second function times the compounding periods and store the value of N and, and compute 
present value or future value depending. So the steps will remain the same. So it means for every question, you just repeat the, step, the same step, writing them, but substituting the right values onto the right place, on the right place, okay? So let's do the easy one. This is your exercise. It should take you two minutes. Whether you're using your calculator or you're using your um, your financial calculator. So I'm going to do this one and then the rest of the other questions, you will do them yourself. Calculate an accumulated amount after three years. If 5,000 is invested at interest rate of 10% compounded quarterly. Now, my question to you, what is it that we are asked to calculate? What are they asking us to calculate? It's the future value. The future value. So therefore, it means those who are using manual calculators, you say S. Those who are using financial calculator, you say VF. What is it that they have given us? After three years, what is that? It's our period, right? So it means this is our T, or we can call it N. What else are we given? So I'm going to first start with the, the manual ones and then write the calculator ones. If 5,000 is invested, so therefore our P, or we can call this PV, is invested at an interest rate of 10%. So our R of 0, 0,1, 0, 0,1, or Remember, I was those who are using financial calculator, INY of 10. What is compounded quarterly? How many compounding periods do we have? Four. There will be four. So our compounding period will be four or whether we call it PUI is equals to four. So now those who are calculating manually, we use the formula S is equals to P times one plus R to the power of T. Remember, always remember that R is divided by the compounding period and T is multiplied by the compounding period. You can do this outside, you can come here, and do that separately and say three times four and come and substitute into R. And you can also do the same here. You can also say this will be 10 divided by four and that will give you R. And the answer you get, you just come back and substitute into the formula that we know, which is this, which is just R to the power of T. Oh, sorry, I used the wrong symbol on here. And then the value, the answers you just substitute. So that is that. Those who are calculating using a financial calculator, you are going to put in the values. I'm not going to put the value. I'm just going to write the step. Second function, CA. Second function, P slash Y, and I'm just going to put the bloggy. You're going to tell me what you put there, E and T, and then you go on and off your calculator and do plus or minus the value of your present value and what is the value of your I and Y and what is the value times second function and and again so you can press n twice i'm not going to write p slash y it's very p uh, times p slash y it's very long i'm just going to say n n again because you're going to need to press n twice second function n and then n again and then you're going to comp future value and then you tell me what is the answer but you can put your answer on the chat. So I did most of the things, so I'll wait.
once you are done calculating, you can write on the chat which options or what is your final answer. Are we winning? Okay. All right. Number two, number two. And we have also how we calculated it. Okay. So those who are using manual calculators, okay, let's see how we calculate it. Our P is 5,000, right? That's what you, you wrote times one plus. Our R, 10 divided by, 10 divided by four is 2.5, right? is 2.5 to the sorry to the power of our t 3 times 4 is 12 and that will be equals to 2 and that's what you said 6724.44 you tell me if they are wrong those who are using financial calculator, you would have said this is four. And here you should have 5,000 interest rate, which is 10, and the period, which is three, and comp. Let's double check, second function CA, second function INY, four ENT, on and off, plus or minus 5,000 PV, 10 INY, 3 second function N, N again, comp FV, 6,000, I also get the same, 6,724.44. Which is option two. You see how easy it is? Now, those who are calculating using the financial calculator, all these three steps here at the bottom this step, and this step, and this step you can interchange. You don't have to put them in order as they appear from here. You can start with the interest, you can start with the period, and so forth. But the first two, the first three part, those ones, you cannot interchange. They always have to be like that. OK. Let's see if we can answer this question. With a deposit of 1,200, Debra opened a savings account paying 5.8 interest annually compounded monthly. She urgently withdrew a sum of 800 after five years. How much will she have accrued or accrued in her travel account four years after withdrawing 800? The amount must be rounded off to the nearest rent. The question is too long and too wordy, but we need to find out what is it that we need to be calculating here. We need to be calculating how much will she 
have accrued in her travel account four years after drawing the uh, amount. So how much? It means the future value. Accrued, it means future value. So that is what we need to know. What will be that amount in her account at that point? But that doesn't say the accumulated amount, um, it's the final thing. So we need to also go back and read the question again so that we identify and make sure that we know exactly what is happening. Sometimes also it's easy when you use a timeline to identify certain things. So we know that they deposit at this point, they deposit 1,200 into their savings account and that ends them interest. I'm going to write the interest of 5,8%. That is the interest. But it is also compounded, which is the compounding period monthly. What is monthly? How many periods is monthly? How many periods is monthly? One. Oh. It's 12. But they also tell us that she withdrew the sum of 800 after five years. So this 1,200 went up to there. Let's call it five years there. So one, two, three, four, five. At this point, they took out 800. So they took out 800. I'm going to put it in bracket so that it's taken out. But also when we read the question, it says, how much will they have in the travel account four years after they have withdrew the 800? So after this point, one, two, three, four years after that, which is one, two, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, which is nine. They want to know at this point how much they will have in their account. So there are a couple of things that you need to know and need to do in order for us to find out what is that value that we need there after nine years is the following. We need to calculate the future value up to this point. We need to calculate how much at that point she would have accumulated. That is the first one. Once we have, we need to also calculate the future value up to that point so that we know from here, we take the balance after we take out the 800. So the balance after we take out the 800 of the future value. So it will be future value minus 800, which will be equals to the balance. We need to take that balance and calculate what will be the future value at this point. Okay, so let's do that. Let us do that. So S is equals to, we already stated that that is our P, so the balance here will be our P at this point. But now we're calculating from here. So S is equals to P times 1 plus R to the power of T. You do the thing and you show me at the end how you calculated it. Second function, CA. Second function, P slash Y, and you tell me how many compounding periods are there, E and T, on and off your calculator, plus or minus, and then you tell me what is the present value that you're going to put there, and say that is a present value, and you're going to put there, I'm going to switch it up, second function, N, N again, and I'm going to put there, I slash Y and you're going to comp future value. So that's what we are looking for. 
you're going to comp future value. Once you're done with that, then we need to calculate, we need to subtract the 800. So once you're done with this, then you're going to say minus 800 and you are not done. You are not done with that 800. So now, all what you need to do right now is to write the answer that you have there. The answer. You write it down. Then you will come here and you will say plus or minus. And then you will put the answer that you have there into that and you will press the PV and you will come here to the second part only. You will press the period here. We said it is after four years. Remember the period here and the periods here are different. So you will put the four and then you will say second function and you will say N and again and then you'll just say comp and then you say FV. Those are the steps that you do. On this side, you will calculate and then you will get the value of S and you will say the answer you get there and you're going to subtract 800 there. And once you have your 800 there, you're going to also go back to say the answer you get here, you're going to say the answer you get there, it's your present value. So that will be your present value. You're going to calculate again S is equals to your answer. I'm going to write the answer times one plus your rate, which will be your rate, depending on how you calculated your rate. Remember the rate is 5,8 divided by compounding period. You just always have to remember that to the power of your period, which is T times four. Here it will be T times five, and the rate will be divided. Your T here, it's five. Sorry, my bad. T times the compounding periods and so forth. So let's see what you did. And you need to tell me what is the answer. So I gave you the steps. I expect you to do the work. I will check the Yeah, Pillow, you did the first step. You need to take the answer and make it your present value now and recalculate, but now using that as your P as 802 and your T now no longer going to be five, but it's going to be four. You need to do the next step. And Candice, I, I guess you are using a financial calculator. The way you are so quick and fast. Yes, I am.
Are we winning? And I hope you are writing all the steps down, especially those who are using financial calculator. You don't rely on what I wrote, but you also write it on your, your book. I, Lizzie, I must step after the PV. Um, what do I write before second in in? Yes. What do I put there? hear you you are muted oh am i muted all the time yes okay. you are muted Ooh, you guys you don't even say i am muted. no we thought maybe you yes. just want to do the calculations <laughs> and then <laughs> after that you uh -uh. will explain oh no 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 i was explaining so it means i was talking to myself all um, right so <clears throat> Uh, for those who are using the feed calculator, then this is how you would have wrote the steps, right? <clears throat> the compounding period is 12. Plus or minus 1,200 is your present value. Five is how long, because that is how long. And 5.8, remember we write it as is, is 5.8, it's interest. Then we compute the value of future value. 
you will see in front of your calculator, you will have five um, eight zero two point five nine and some few numbers, right? Uh, and then you need to just say minus 800 and that will give you an answer and write it down. And that answer will be, sorry, the, when you say compute future value, it will give you 1,600 and some number. So let me just calculate it quickly because I don't have it in front of me as well. I and Y, 12 E and T, and on and off, plus or minus 1,200, that is present value, and 5.8, that is I and Y, and 5, second function, N, N again, that is the period, and comp future value. You will get an answer of, when you say comp future value, you'll get an answer of 1,602. So which, this is also wrong there. This is also wrong. Because I'm using the wrong answers. 602.5, sorry. 602.5913. Something like that. Subtract 800, then that will be your present value. You just, the answer you get from subtracting that, so minus 800, that gives you 802.59, which is the value that you will write and put there. And you say that plus or minus the answer you got there, that will be your present value. And for second function n, n again, that and then say compute. So you just click on on what I just said, plus or minus without even going anywhere, plus or minus 805 or 802.59 and you press PV and you just press four and you say second function N and again, that will give you the compounding periods and you say comp future value and the answer you get will be 1011.5966 but they say round it off to the nearest rent so that will give you option number three those who are calculating manually you just substitute and calculate then you will get 602.5930 and some numbers and you take that 1602.5930 and subtract 800 and you get 802.59 and you substitute and you will also get 1011. What did you get? Um, uh, what did you get? Pelo 11.6. That's what Pelo get. 11. Because they round it off to one decimal 0.6, but we want it to, to, to a nearest trend, so it's still going to be 112. So that's how you will calculate their compounding periods. Let me leave you to this one. I'm not going to give you some hints or anything here. You are asked to calculate. They say Sam invested 6,800 at 12% interest per annum, compounded monthly. The number of months he has to wait to invest the amount to grow to 9,165.32 or 37, rounded to two decimal will be. So they want the number of months, not in years, but your period. So, because it is compounded monthly, so the answer you get when you calculate, so you will need to use S is equals to P times one plus R to the power of T, they want T. Make T the subject of the formula. Second function CA, 
they can function. C slash Y, and you need to put in your compounding periods and press E and T on and off your calculator, plus or minus. Remember, you are given two numbers, present value, future value. One of them needs to have a plus or minus in front. So we can put the present value first and then do the future value second. What else are we given? Interest. So I'm just identifying them by looking at the question. So this is your present value. This is your future value. This is your rate. And it's compounded monthly, which will be 12. And we are asked to calculate T. So we need to comp. And that's what we need on this side. On this side, to make T the subject of the formula, we need to find S divide by P uh, 1 plus R to the power of T. And if I take the log, so this will be the log of S over P this side, and this side will be the log of 1 plus R to the power T. And T can come in front, log of 1 plus R, log of S over P. So this is what you will do before you even start calculating because you want to make T the subject of the formula. So therefore it means the formula that you're going to be using is the following. I'm just going to write it here at the top. I'm going to remove all this and write the formula because that is the formula you're going to be using. It's log of S over P divided by the log of 1 plus R is equals to T. That's what you are looking to use to calculate. So for both, I have given you, if you don't know where to find the log on your financial, on your scientific calculator, you must look for it. It might be written in orange or it might be written on the calculator as is. It is just log like that. It's written like that on your calculator. Okay. Do we have an answer? Should be easy and quick and easy. So. Okay, pillow. The the question you asked in the uh, in the chat about Homoto buying a townhouse, that is for next week when we deal with um, annuities. You can bring that question again, but I think it's also on the uh, um, on one of my notes. I'm not sure, but you can bring that again next week. Um, or you can post it on WhatsApp and then I will add it onto the activities for next week. We're dealing with annuities. So number one, Candy says number two, Kihilwe says number one. So let's see if it's number one, if it's truly number one. Uh, let's change color of my pen. Okay, so what? How many compounding periods? We said there are 12. Present value is 6,800. Future value is 9,165.37. Interest is 12. Second function CA, second function I and Y. Uh, 12 E and T on and off plus or minus 6,800. That is our present value. 
165.37, that is our future value, 12, that is I and Y, and comp N, that is equals to 30. And that is 30, 30 months. If that we have said in yes, you will take this 30 months divided by 12. If it says in yes and it's compounded monthly, quarterly, you will divide by four. If it says yearly, you will divide by one. If it says by annually, you will divide that 30 months by the compounding period. Only when they say the number in years. If they say so, then you divide by the compounding period. So for now, they just want it in the same month as the compounding period. So in terms of the logs, so log of our future value is 9165.37 divided by 6,800, right? Divide by the log of one plus our rate. Yeah, it's 12%, so it's 0, 0,12 divided by our 12%, which is equals to T. And I'm going to assume that the answer you get here from calculating the whole question will be equals to T will be equals to 30 as well. <clears throat> Let's see on the answers. So, Tati, can can I please have your number, Miss Boy, for the WhatsApp group? Okay, I will share the WhatsApp group just now. Um, which means it is option number one. Okay. Um. I also have this one question as well. But I'm not going to ask you to do that. Um, in the last 15 minutes that we have, I just want to go through one of the other important activity uh, thing that links to compounding periods is time value of your money. I'm not I don't expect you to go and do some calculations because it's Everything that we have done is just that you need to know when to move money backwards or forward. This is only relevant to those who are doing BN, uh, QMI. But if you're doing BNU this year, therefore it means next year you will be doing QMI or next semester you will be doing QMI. Stay behind and see what we're talking about so that then it refreshes your mind the time you, you look at the same information. So time value of your money is when you are and negotiate whether you want to change your agreement date. You want to move your money forward, meaning you are struggling with the payments and you want to make sure that you pay in the future than the agreed time. Or you want to move your money backwards, meaning you now own lotto and you want to pay off whatever you owe or whatever you, you, you loan. And that is what time value of your money is. Um, and it's also based on the principles of or the concepts of present value and future value. There's nothing wrong with that. So there are two rules that you always need to remember with this. To move money forward, it means you're going to inflate the sum by multiplying by the accumulation factor. So the accumulation factor is the same as the one that we have been using, which is from the future value is P times one plus R. Come on, RT. So that is moving money forward. We have been doing that with the compounding periods, uh, uh, ex activities or exercises. That's what we've been doing, moving the money forward. Moving money backwards. So that's what we're talking about here with time value of your money. So we want to move money backwards. So when we move money backwards, we're going to be dividing by the accumulation factor, which is that we divide by that. Meaning, or we can multiply by the inverse, which is minus T. You can see that is the same. If I multiply by minus T there, 
then it's the same as multiplying by the negative uh, by one over. Um, sorry. So this will be the same as S is equals to P divided by one plus R to the power of T. That is moving money backwards. So we can do this way or is the same as S is equals to P times one plus R to the power of negative T. Those two equations are one and the same thing. So moving money forward, we use the standard equation, moving money backwards. We use either we multiply by negative T, um, the accumulation factor of the discounted factor, or we divide by the accumulation factor. That's what we do. Okay. And in terms of moving money, there are there is a concept of obligations and debts and payment. So it means the number of payments should cancel out the number of debt or the number of obligations you have. And let's look at an example. If Ed had to pay his father 7,000, which was due in four years time, to lessen his burden, he pays his father 1,300 in advance. At the end of year one, after some bad luck, he had to go and borrow an additional 708 from his father at the end of year two. He decides to live a debt-free life and pay off the entire loan at the end of three years. The payments and the debts are subject to the same interest, namely 11% per annum, compounded yearly. What will be the final payment at the end of year three? If you look at this, you might think, oh, but here we're talking about annuity. No, this is still compounding interest. So sometimes you can draw a, let's draw first a timeline like we did with the other, other one. So we know that he went and he borrowed 7,000 at the beginning, but it's due at the end of four years. So let's put four years there. So this is what year one. At the end of four years, that 7,000 is due there. It needs to end at that point. To lessen his debt, he pays and then he goes and he pays at the end of year one. So year one, this is zero. And there goes year one at the end of year one, which is the beginning of year two. At the end of year one, one, two, three, four. At the end of year one, he pays. 1,300. So he's still left with three years to go. Um, after some bad luck, he had to go and borrow. So he goes and borrow at the end of year two. So there is year two, he goes and borrow money. Since I don't have a ruler, my thingy, let's redraw the lines properly. Yeah, right? Still, so this one we know that it will end there. At the end of year two, we know that that starts, but it needs to go somewhere. I don't know. We don't know whether it's gonna end at year four or not, right? Because they didn't say when it's gonna he's gonna pay that. He decided to live a debt-free life for the entire uh, of the entire loan at the end of year three. So there is year three. He decides to finish off at that point. The payments and the debts are subject to the same interest of 11%. So we know that our interest here is 11% 11, 11 per annum. So that one is clear, but it's also compounded yearly. So it means it's every year. So our compounding periods, which makes things easier, is one. Now we need to determine this. So the payment, because it's also included in the interest, it will stop right there. So it's moving forward. So since it's moving forward, then it means we're going to be calculating P times one plus R to the power of T because it's moving forward. We're going to use that formula. The debt free, the 
uh, 780, sorry, the 780, it's also moving forward, but because it's going to end there, so this will also be P times 1 plus R to the power of T. The 7,000, remember it was due at that point. Now it needs to move backwards. So, but when it moves backwards, it moves backwards this way. So it will move backwards. So it means it's P times 1 plus R to the power of negative T. Now you need to also include the T's in every one of them. So for the 7,000, instead of counting from 1 to 4, we say how many times it's moving forward. It's moving backwards, so it's moving one time. So our T here will be equals to 1. Our T here, it's also going to be equals to 1. Our T here, because it's on the second year or at the end of the first year, so we're going to count 1, 2. It's moving forward two times. So our T here will be equals to 2. And we can just use it this way. Debt equals to obligation. Oh, sorry. Payment equals to obligation. So our payment was 1,200 plus our final payment that we need to make. Our debt, we know that it was a 7,000 plus the 750. Now we can write the formulas in terms of what we know. We know that some of them are moving forward. Some of them are moving backwards. And those are the formulas that I've put in. And you can just calculate. So we know that the 1,200 is moving forward two times. So there is the period because we also multiply by the compounding period of one. So it's two. And our R is divided by the compounding, compounding periods. And all of them are have the same interest of 11%. So divide 0, 0,1. 1, 1 by 1 is, is 0, 0,11. So our debt of 7,000, it's moving backward once. So that is what it's moving backward. And the 780 as well, at the end of the second year, it's moving only one time to the third year. So we can then just substitute and calculate and manipulate this so that we can only be left with final payment and our final payment is equals to 5,780. So you just need to know how to do this. If you are using your financial calculator, it's the same thing. You just write the formula because we know the, the things that we need to be calculating. Write them down, but use your calculator, use your, use your, your, your steps to, to do that. So you can write payment, of deposit uh, 1,300 and the final payment is equals to the debt of 7,000 plus the debt of, um, of 780 and then write the steps of each one of them. So you can see that this is the step for the 7,000. Those will be the step for the 780 and that is the step for the 1300 what is more important is when the is when the money is moving backwards always remember to also use the plus or minus so this minus you will use the plus or minus the same way as you use the plus or minus there to put that so this negative here you can just use plus or minus to put the negative in front and we will get the same answer as the previous one and that is time value for money. So these notes are uploaded on the on the platform. And the classes happens every Monday. From now on until you go write the exam, we will be having classes. You will notice that I do have lots and lots of other exercises that you can do to practice. If you do these exercises, you can share your answers on the WhatsApp groups or you can email me. And I will gladly help you sort it out. I haven't forgotten about the previous activity. Actually, I've, I actually I forgot not that I haven't forgotten. I forgot that I promised that I will send you 
on the WhatsApp the solution to that answer. I will also post it on um, on the WhatsApp groups as well, so you can see how we answer that question that we couldn't do the last time. Um, I forgot about it. I will do it uh, tomorrow as soon as I am free, and then I will upload it. I just remembered now when I saw um, Pelo asking a question there. Do you have any question before we wrap up the session? And any question, any comments? Uh, good evening, good evening. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, I just joined you a little bit late, but it was before half past. But I see now that it's from 1800 hours up until to 1930 hours. So it's actually one and a half hour. Um, as you say, you will upload up the previous sessions because I think I missed the last session. You're going to upload them on on this uh, platform or on the, on the WhatsApp one. Thank you. Okay, I will speak about that one just now as well. Um, okay, I've uploaded the the register on the on the chat please make sure that you 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 look at that um the whatsapp groups okay so sorry um i'm gonna get you the link so make sure that when you join the whatsapp you use there uh, you use the correct link I can't find the what I can't find the links. I don't know where I placed the links. Just give me a second. I will find the links for you. Hmm. How possible? Hmm. Does anyone have the links? <laughs> Since I can't find the links, oh, I do, I, I have them, I have them. So please make sure that you join the correct group as well. I'm gonna share, the first one is the QMI link, if you want to join the WhatsApp group. Okay, and then the second one is the, the BNU. Please make sure that you complete the register as well. Uh, please, can you go through the example of the last example we just did? We did ne next week. Unfortunately, I cannot repeat the session. So once we've done with, once we concluded the, this, then we done. Next week, it's a new session. They are not linked. Um, however, you are more than welcome because there are activities as well on on the handouts in terms of time value of your money. There are a couple of exercises. So this is one of them. So there you can see obligations. You can do those exercises, the two exercises, and we can have a discussion on WhatsApp how to answer them and show me and you can show me how you answer those questions as well and then I can give you feedback um, and yeah so unfortunately next week we're doing uh, because we only have one hour 30 minutes we're doing annuities as well so next week I'm going to show you how to answer questions relating to annuities um, and then yeah so let's oh, come on because I need to close up. Sorry, my bad. Okay, so let's recap and check in with the session. So in this session, you've learned uh, not, not the simple interest, but we've learned compound interest and rushed through with the last 15 minutes, but at least have an idea in terms of what time value of your money is. What is very important is that 
your financial calculator, if you don't have it, there is no need to go and buy it, but it is a must to have. These two um, sessions that we had, the simple interest session and the compound interest sessions, you can still go get away with not having a financial calculator. When we go and do the annuities and then also do amortization, you cannot. Um, you will require the calculator because sometimes they can ask you to calculate or calculate a um, the balance at the end of 62 years. How would you create an amortization schedule for 62 years? Or even if it's 24 months, or even if it's 12 months, it's going to take you forever if you are using a manual calculator. But if you have a financial calculator, it will be very, very, very useful because you will finish your exam on time and not panic as well. So when using a, a scientific calculator, remember to use your formulas, identify what you are given in the question, be able to identify the things that are in the question and the right formula, because remember, when you go and write the exam, it's not going to say compounding. This is where you use the compounding interest. You just need to make sure that you read the question and identify that this is a compounding interest. It's not an annuity because there is a, a that, that small little thing that changes from being a compound interest to an annuity. It's easy to identify simple interest because they will tell you that it's simple interest and you will know that you will need to use simple interest. But when it starts with compounding interest and when you're doing annuities and when you're doing amortization, all of them use compounded periods. So you just need to know how to identify the questions in order to select or use the correct formula as well. When it comes to time value of your money, you need to always be mindful that if you're moving money backwards, you need to uh, multiply or use the discounted um, uh, factor, or you need to multiply by a negative accumulation factor. Um, what else? And that's it from me. Any questions? Uh, for me, it's just a comment, Ms. Boy. It has been always a pleasure to be on this platform, even if I join late, but I, I, I managed to grab up something. Thank you for your effort. Thank you. No problem. Now, when it comes to the notes and comes to the recordings, um, the recordings are shared. Um, I just want to um, say the recordings are always shared on, on the way you find the schedule and finding the schedule uh, i always say you need to keep the links that i share with you because those links are very important um, some of them have important information so the link that i shared I, i'm not sure if i did share it now with you on on this call but i just want to show you uh, let's see if I can. So th there is a link that I always share with people in terms of I've created a short, a short link for it. Um, I can also share that with everyone again on, on this call so that you know where to find everything. So I'm posting the, the same link there. Okay, right. So that it's part of the recording as well. I want it to be there. So when you click on that link, it will open up this um, uh, schedule. On the schedule, even if you don't attend a class or you miss a class, you can still go back and 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 and, and find your uh, your notes. So today it's Monday. Unfortunately, the schedule. Um, cut off. They don't load it for the whole whole month. It's only for a week. So as you can see, start from Monday and it ends on Saturday. Um, so to, today it's Monday. 
you will be able to see Monday's events. And this is our event, Basic Numeracy Skills. And when you click on join session, it's where you will jo you join the sessions all the time. When you click on notes and recordings, it will come to this platform. Unfortunately, they haven't loaded all the recordings. This first recording as well, it's cut off because somebody stopped the recording and they never gave us some, uh, what do you call that, permission to download this. So UNISA uploads these recordings for you. So you can come here, but I can see that we're missing so many of them. So already now, I think the second, I'm not sure if we had another one before this, but there are recordings missing from here. I'm going to guess. No, it's only one. And so we had the 11th, which is half cut off. Then you have the 25th, which is the one that we had. And then last week's one, I think probably they will load it on here. So you will find last week's one. And then this week's one will also be loaded here. But it takes long to get there. The notes before the session every week, I will load the notes. If I have the notes well in advance, I will, I will load them here for you. But here are the notes. As you can see there, there are today's notes is there. And this is the note that we were using today. So you just click on, on the links. So if you click on here, it says open class notes folder. You just click there, it will open the folder. On your site, it might not look the same way as my one, but you will be able to see all the notes that are shared with everyone. Um, you can access them there. Thank you. Uh, just hold on. Don't go anywhere. And don't go anywhere. And I'm going to, to stop the recording. And thank you for being part of the session today. Bye. Don't go.